Hello and welcome to the International Pentagon Challenge. My name is Kai Knight and together we'll be embarking on a very special football manager journey where we'll aim to try and win every major international competition in all five continents, forcing our hand to play with hundreds of different types of players and most importantly hopefully create loads of awesome different types of tactics along the way. Once that's complete, only then are we allowed to set our sights on the biggest of all goals, the FIFA World Cup. How many nations will we have to manage until we work our way to the top? How many dodgy names will we have to pronounce along the way? So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun along the way. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to episode 50 of the International Pentagon Challenge. So, we've defeated Asia, and here we are trying to defeat Africa. We are now the Egypt manager, after God knows how many years of management. And we've got quite a big game coming up. It is the Ethiopia versus Egypt game that you will know about if you watched the previous episode, uh, where we kind of took a look at some of the players we've got at our disposal and the system um, that I'm really trying to kind of build using the players that I have. Now, we've got Ethiopia coming up, and unfortunately, we don't really have much of a scouting report on them because I forgot to tell my scouts that I kind of want regular opposition reports. So, yeah, we <laughs> we kind of just have to go based off what their kind of manager looks like. He likes to play, and he seems to play a bit of a 3-5-2, which I think suits us fine um, because we're going to start off, rather than playing Ramadan uh, Subhi, in the AMC role, I'll start off with a left winger. We'll use our secondary tactic. I really wish the phone would stop ringing. Um, to try and phone stop ringing. To try and um, use our pacey players down the wings and take advantage of the fact that they're not playing with fullbacks and we could potentially get our fullbacks involved and have two versus ones down the wing. But in general, generally speaking, we're away from home. It's not a must win. Realistically, we should be looking to win, and if we can guarantee a win in this first leg, if it's comfortable, we won't even bother with the second leg, because we really should be winning this one pretty comfortably in terms of uh, this World Cup qualification game. So, without further ado, let's head straight into the game. Obviously, the reason why we're not going into too much detail like we normally do is because we kind of did that in the last episode and not much has changed, but one thing I have changed is I have actually kind of assessed corners um, and we do now have two different corner routines. So we don't have great set piece takers here with Egypt, except our right winger, who's pretty decent at corners. Uh, obviously, he's right footed though, so from the right side, we're opting to go for an out swinging corner, um, get it towards the edge of the box, and hopefully, the kind of right back, Hamad Abdurraouf, who has 12 long shots. Um, can pick the ball up and take a shot on goal. Um, if he's taking it in from the left, it makes sense with him being right-footed for him to go for an in-swinger. And really, ideally, I've got Hamad Kamal, 15 jumping reach. This guy's massive. One of the best centre-backs probably around in the game at the moment. Plays for Arsenal. Um, try and get him attacking the near post to see if he can either head it across goal or you know cross the box and see if he can, most importantly, just try and score a goal. Um, so that's it really. We've not overcomplicated things with throw-ins or anything else because we don't really have any throw-in takers to go for long throws or anything of that like. So here we go then. World Cup qualification game. Really on paper it should be a walk in the park for us the Egyptians but as we know in Football Manager no game really is much of a walk in the park. Now, one disappointing thing is that kind of our right winger is an incredibly important player for us, um, not just for the set pieces, of course, but in terms of how we um, attack uh, down the wings. And he's not exactly too much fit at the moment, so that's not really too pleasing. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So far, though, in terms of highlights, it does actually seem like uh, Ethiopia have had uh, the better of things, even though. This is the first highlight, but it is worrying that against a team like Ethiopia, 12 minutes in, um, we've not actually seen a single highlight for ourselves. It's hard to see really where an Ethiopian goal will come from, just comparing the sheer quality we've got versus the quality that they've got. And it's a bit harsh to call what they've got quality, to be fair, because they've not really got much of it. But highlights-wise, as we can see, it's pretty much all them. Siam picks the ball up, and uh, as the attacking left-back will make a forwards run. 
Yahya finds Abdul Rao for now. El Sayed could have taken on his opposing fullback, tried to make a run. Said now will turn and shoot, but our first shot and goal, unfortunately, ends up closer to the corner flag. This is nice though. There's space over on the right wing. Ramsey's through. Oh, and he hits the post. So slow, methodical play. We're getting there. Um, yeah, a bit disappointed it's taken so long for us to actually get in the game, but we're creating chances, we're getting corners, we're getting set pieces, we're getting men forwards, and that's the important thing. But here we go, we pick the ball up, we recycle, and we get soldiers marching towards the Ethiopian box. Abdurraouf is the inside fullback, we'll find Said, and once again we hit the woodwork, could have easily bounced in off the back of the Ethiopian goalkeeper there, um, and that wasn't the best of corners either. <laughs> so this new corner routine, definitely not paying off so far. It's a very poor cross from Ramsey, given that he is our left winger. But we're creating chances. We're slowly but surely getting there, and that really is the important thing. I just, I do feel like looking at us sometimes, we do look a little, oh god, that was dreadful. We do look a little too deep for my liking, so that is definitely something I look to uh, to change. Germa on the ball in midfield. Ethiopia trying to get the ball in towards our half, but eventually have to resort towards a long ball. And, uh, well, it results in a free kick for us. So here we go. We're going to raise our defensive line a little bit, kind of increase our width a little bit, and no longer look to retain possession. Should hopefully mean we will become a little bit more direct um, and start, hopefully, creating more chances on goal. But if it stays like this... You know, going into the second half, I think we might have to gamble and stick a second a second man up front because, um, believe it or not, we're approaching half-time and we've not created anywhere near enough attacking opportunities. So it's not been the best first half. The good news is that Ethiopia haven't really uh, looked like they've troubled us and we've hit the woodwork twice. But in general, I feel like we should be creating more more chances on goal. So tell the lads I'm not happy with what I've seen so far. And it is probably time for us to see if there's anything we can do to perhaps change things around. And the first thing I am going to do is immediately increase our wingers to uh, attack. And Yahya's going to come off for, I think it's Mansoor who I have in mind, or is it Ramadan? It is Mohammed Ramadan. He's had a few good games, you know, in the build-up to this game in particular. So he's going to get some some game time as well. But that is really going to be it. I feel like just continue doing what we're doing, and eventually uh, we will start to create chances going forwards. It's that simple. If we hit roughly the 60th minute and whatnot, and we've still not found a goal, then I can consider maybe bringing on. Um, this guy, Henny Hassan. Obviously, you guys will probably remember him from a few episodes ago. He is lacking in match sharpness, um, but he's finally fit again. He plays for Leverkusen, of course. You probably remember we looked at him. He played a while for Schalke, Schalke's B team, um, and he's been injured since. But that's a really nice ball. Abderouf will pick it up. Needs to find the striker, but instead tried to go all the way. And it was a very good tackle from Tok Galwak. Uh, right in the box, you know, you put a foot wrong and that's a penalty straight away. So they're passing it around the back pretty well. Um, so if we go for like a second striker or move our wingers forwards, we'll be able to really apply more pressure to them in their own half. But then again, I don't really mind too much at the moment, giving them time on the ball in their own half because when they come to try and move it into the final third they want to attack, which is our defensive third, uh, they're often just out of ideas, they don't have the technical ability to do much with it, and it often just ends up resorting to a direct ball going forwards. Just doesn't help, I guess, when your players tackle themselves like that. So this is what I'm talking about. They're playing it pretty nicely, you know, it looks like they're, they're, they're controlling the game, and then they ruin it with the massive direct ball forwards. Siam is... Going to play the ball into someone who manages to cross into the box. Ramsey to Schalke, and we've hit the post again. Woodwork is not in our favour today. <laughs> you know, it could even hit the woodwork and bounce in, but instead, uh, doesn't really fancy it. And it seems like um, Hamad Abdurraouf has given away not only a foul, but is going to pick up a yellow card. 
There we go, first yellow card of the season. It's not really a season, but whatever. So Kamal will head out, and uh, Ramadan will begin the counter-attack. Saeed is fast and furious, and if he can play... Oh, I was going to say, if he could have played a, a direct ball downwards there, we had two players he could have sweated the ball to. So this is the kind of situation, once again, that I'm talking about. They play the ball nicely, but eventually they're going to run out of ideas, and they're either going to switch to the other side of the park with a direct ball or try to give the ball towards a big striker up front. And there we go. There was that direct ball from kind of that AMC style player. But we've got a very, very pacey centre back ourselves. And on that note, we're going to take the lead. It kind of looked offside to me. Uh, I'm really intrigued to see if we can see that again. Because we kind of did to them what they tried doing to us. So that is the second. Oh, that looks offside to me. I mean, that is tight, isn't it? There, he looks onside, but there he looks off. So that is a really tight one, but as far as I'm concerned, we've got the goal we were looking for, and hopefully now, if we can make it two or three, um, and hopefully we can, once we bring on some fresh legs, um, you know, it might leave us in a position where we won't even really need to worry too much uh, about the second leg, which means the next episode can perhaps end up being a bit more of an exciting game, but it does seem like... Uh, Ahmed Al Sayed, who is our right winger, of course, has picked up a knock. So Ramadan Subhi will come on in his place. Not 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 too fast um, nowadays, given his age. But I do I do like a bit of Ramadan Subhi. You know, a bit of Premier League experience, um, a bit of technical ability can go far at lower levels like this. And how unlucky were Egypt yesterday not to beat Portugal? By the way. <laughs> Felt sorry for him. I woke up and saw that Ronaldo got two 90-odd minute minute goals. Um, but that's what Ronaldo does to you, I guess. But it was a great strike from Mohamed Salah as well. No idea how he managed to find the back of the net from that kind of position. But I can seriously see him you know, pushing for the Ballon d'Or if he keeps up this kind of form in the next few years' time. What a player. Anyways, there we go. Another rubbish corner, but that's... Oh, well, I mean, he's a player. We wanted to pick the ball up on the edge of the box and, and take a shot, but he doesn't in the end, and then our centre-back gives it away, and Ethiopia can counter-attack. This is why we really need to grab a second goal. Won't make any changes just yet. There's a direct ball forward towards Saeed. Not quite sure why he opted to do that. Probably turn on retain possession. Trying to play the ball out the back, but again, doesn't quite fall in their favour. Direct ball from the winger towards Saeed. And instead, we give away possession ourselves. So it does seem like as we're starting to tire, we're starting to get a little bit clumsier with the ball. Can we make it two? What a save that is from Mamo. I mean, great positioning from him. But you, you can't help but feel like the goalkeeper should have maybe... The goalkeeper, the striker, should have maybe done a little bit better there. So I'm just going to turn retain possession on just to reduce the directness of some of our passes a tiny bit. Uh, we can probably afford to make another substitution. That's going to be Mohamed Henny who comes back into the side to play as a regular uh, fullback. Again, not an amazing player, but pretty good in terms of an Egyptian. Good tackling, decent physical attributes, and most importantly, 31 years of age. We now have two experienced players on the pitch who can hopefully make sure that the lads who are on the pitch keep their heads in the game. And that's all three substitutions we've made. So, sub -hate. We'll cross towards Ramsey, and that should have been 2-0. That should have been 2-0 there. How does he not put that in the back of the net? That was a shame, wasn't it? So, not the exact player we wanted to to, to pick it up on the edge of the box in the end. But, um, yeah, he did, he did try and take a shot. Bless him, but it didn't exactly end well. I mean, the truth is, even if we get it to the player, we want to pick it up on the edge of the box. That guy's still only got about 12 long shots or something. Not too brilliant like that. So there we go. 2-0. Lovely football by the lads. And, you know, I know I said we had a quiet first half. But we made a few changes. And there were just small, subtle changes where we just got our wingers involved a lot more. Because it was really evident that our kind of lone striker up front was getting way too isolated. And sometimes when it's going wrong, little tweaks like that can go a long way. And, you know, I say Ethiopia aren't that great of a side. Yes, they haven't created much against us. But international management, you don't have that much familiarity going for you. It's not as 
easy. That surely that's a pass back, as easy or as simple with, as as club management um, in terms of getting players to gel together, especially when you're a new manager. And don't get me wrong, when you go away from home and play against you know a country like Ethiopia, even though we are the better side and they park the bus and play a four four one one like they have done, it can be very difficult to break teams like this down. Hani to Ramadan. Oh, nice one two can we get across into the box i think we just about can and that is three so there we go at three nil i think there's not much point in making the next episode the second leg i think we'll put an end to it there um, and given that it's three nil we'll also drop down to key highlights but overall poor first half followed up by a pretty decent second half if you ask me the lads stuck to the game plan We've managed three goals. It could become even more if the Ethiopians aren't careful. And is that going to be number four? Oh, really should have been there. It should have been number four. Striker should have done better. Um, and, you know, that more than likely, unless something horrible goes wrong at home in the next leg, it should mean we're into the next um, stages of the World Cup qualifiers. And, you know, Egypt aren't one of them sides that kind of regularly qualifies for the World Cup, like maybe Ghana in Africa. That would have been... A very Japanesque job to take within that continent. That's offside. No? Okay. That looked offside to me. Um, so Egypt is more of a challenge than someone like a Ghana or a Cameroon maybe. But every now and then Egypt do qualify for a World Cup. And even though I have my doubts about some of the quality we have um, within this team on a global basis, I still feel like with some of the players we have at the moment... Uh, especially with some of the friendly wins we've got like against decent teams like Angola, for example. Um, I do feel like we can at least seriously challenge for the next African Cup of Nations with the current kind of set of players that we have. And a lot of them are really young as well, so they're only going to get more experienced and more better the more they kind of play with each other. So, of course, tell the lads that we're happy with what we've seen. And that's going to be it for this video. So, apologies that this video didn't go out on the Friday. Um, I fell asleep at half eight, which probably explains why after I was kind of tired from the week. Like I said, I've got next week off, which means um, videos won't really be a problem because I'll have loads of free time. And we don't really know who or what we're playing going into the next kind of the new year. What we do know is that um we will probably be playing world cup qualifiers which is understandable the next african cup of nations starts in two years time so i think if you know we opted not to take japan to the world cup let's see if we can take egypt to the world cup let's see if we can put something special together that leaves us in really good stead to build up to defeating Africa at the next African Cup of Nations. Um, in terms of other results, just before we head off, let's see, have we got any upsets? Um, so Congo only lost 1-0 to Nigeria, so that could quite easily, you know, end in tears after the second leg. Algeria just about beat Guinea 2-1. Tunisia beat the Ivory Coast, which is a very interesting result. Kenya also lost to Tanzania. Cameroon pretty um, pretty comfortable. Um, any other surprises maybe? Angola look like they're enjoying themselves with a 5-0 win. And that looks it really. I mean, Ghana only beat Libya 2-1 as well. So those kind of tight games at 1-0, 2-1 could honestly go either way come the next leg. So... Fingers crossed for us, some of these teams do mess up, uh, and it'll mean that we will obviously get a easier World Cup qualification group. But if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm really excited for the next kind of couple of, of episodes managing Egypt. Um, and as always, thanks for watching.